something and to work on something and to do, like all the things that I'm, I'm supposed to be doing. I that, mean, that is that's a walk. Is that on the inside or outside? That's inside. Okay. That's inside. I have an eye in it. <laughs> okay. I was just making sure. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to try to get the hat with it. Wait, mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Got him. Did you get it with your hat? Yeah, I got it. Let's talk about the new single yeah. and let's talk about the theme. So I, uh, I've got two rules when I write music. Um, rule number one is I want every single word of every single song to line up 100% with scripture. Like I will not record it. I will not even type it into the keyboard unless I feel like, yeah, this God said this, God's put this in place, so now it's worth singing. So that's rule number one. But rule number two for me is I always want my songs to serve as time capsules of what God was doing in my heart right then. Like, I want to be honest, because I may not be able to tell you what I ate for lunch the day that I wrote a song or what shoes I was wearing, but I can tell you what God was building or taking away or teaching or waiting to show me or whatever that was, that tension. And so when I walk into a room, I really want to be writing from, from my point of view. And so something I've struggled with for a long time um, is the idea of forgiveness. Now, it's not Jesus' forgiveness. I love him and I trust him. But I have a hard time loving and trusting myself sometimes and my ability to forgive. Not even other people. I'm super gracious to where I, I can be so gracious towards someone, but if I make a mistake, I just kind of log that back as another thing that's wrong with me sometimes. For the longest time, I would look back and I would see a mistake that I had made and I would still feel the sting of that shame and of that hurt and of that, just whatever trouble surrounded that. And I would carry that around. Um, and even though I knew he had forgiven me, I was going to be like, no, nah, it's still a mark against for myself over here. But what I'm learning is, is the longer I am walking with Jesus and the, the closer I get to him as we go down this road of life together, the more I see things from his point of view. So now when I look back at those things that I once held as these faults of mine. I just see his forgiveness and I see his mercy and I see a grace that is greater than all my sin. So I wanted to write a song that reminded me in the morning, like, hey, this is the anthem when we wake up today. And this is the song we sing when we go to bed at night, is that for whatever mistakes that I've made, I want to be able to look back at my life and not see, because if I'm looking back at my checklist and I'm looking at things that I can offer to this world, they're going to be a pile of mistakes a mile high. But if I believe that he is who he says that he is, then when I look back, I should see that grace covering everything and that mercy being right there. So it's my reminder like, hey, don't be so hard on yourself today. Don't be so hard on yourself yesterday, but let's look at the grace today and let's celebrate and be glad that it's here. What are some verses that come to mind for you? you well, it's, it's verses that I've known for a long time, but all of a sudden I start going like, okay, what's the full meaning of this? So 1 Peter 5, 7 just says, Cast your cares upon him because he cares for you. So if we really break this down, I can look at it at surface level and be like, yeah, God cares for me so I can tell him how I feel. But like he cares about the things that I care about. And my care, maybe something I'm excited about or maybe something I'm really troubled by. And so if I really want to just go deeper in that and really put both feet inside that verse, I'm going like, okay, God, is it a lack of trust of what I think you can handle? Is it a lack of trust of me being able to open myself up to you? And so if I really want to have this sincere, deep relationship with the person who knows everything already, um, I might as well go ahead and just say like, okay, all cards on the table. Here's how I'm feeling about it. But when I look at the one who did not know sin, who became sin so that we could have the righteousness of God, it reminds me all over again, like, no, he is, he's been the one and he will remain the one. And he keeps being that for me over and over again. And then on a certain, I talk to people all the time who just say like, but you don't know my story. You don't know what I've done. You don't know the things that have been done to me. And I just go, I don't have to because, because uh, uh, Romans 5, 8 says that God demonstrates his great love for us in this way that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So it doesn't matter what part of the story you're ready to tell. He knows all of it. He loves all of it. And he is ready to walk you through all of it. Mm -hmm. And it's just a trust of us being like, all right, well, here's all of it. Mm -hmm. Makes me think about your song, uh, Walking Free. Yeah. Right. Being able to now take that and own that and begin walking free. Right. How would you encourage somebody who's, you don't know my past, you don't know all this. Here's this verse, but now let's take the next step in walking yeah. free. What does that look like? I'm, I'm actually in the process right now of writing a book um, that that song kind of um, opened up. So it's a devotional. It's 42 pages, 42 um, steps is what we're calling it. So certain steps 
feel like you are stepping over the top of a mountain. And certain things feel like these little baby steps that you can barely just get there. But here's the deal. Anytime you're moving forward towards your goal, you're closer. And so it's not about how the step even looks because sometimes it is a very heavy step. When you're walking away from fear and you're walking towards forgiveness, that may be a really, really hard step. And you may look back and go, I barely even took a step here. Um, but my thought is if we're trying to if we're trying to make it, if we're, we're running the race that lays bef lies before us and we set our eyes on the prize, all he's doing is cheering us on. And if we're looking at it, look at the story of the prodigal. Oh, there's that. <laughs> if we look at the story of the prodigal, the father sees him coming down the road and meets him halfway. We're the only faith that does that. Every other God, you have to be good enough to be able to make it all the way up to where they are. And if you do all the things right and you earn just enough favor, maybe one day you can reach the level that they're at. But our God knew that we'd never make it. So he left his throne and met us where we were and walks with us. He ran. Ran. He, the father ran to his son. Threw a robe around his shoulders, put a ring on his finger and said, my son was dead, but now he is alive. So if Jesus is cheering on the life that we have because of him, then we should be cheering too. Even on those days where it's hard, we should still look at that and go, your grace is sufficient in this moment right now. You are more than my weakness. You are, I am loved even though I feel unlovable. Even though I've done unlovable things or unlovable things have been done to me, I am still loved. So that's where our identity comes from. If we find our identity in the one who calls us to walk in that freedom, then, then all of a sudden it doesn't matter what the world says. It doesn't matter what we say on our bad days. What he says is that I'm a child and I'm walking alongside of my father. What I hear from you, too, is a lot of intentionality. To know those things, to repeat back those words that you just said, is intentionality in spending time with the Lord huh. and knowing His Word. What, what does that look like for you within your daily scope? Because if you're busy. Yeah. How do you carve space? What does that look like for you? It is, it is hard for me sometimes to have a paper Bible that I can hold in my hand and be able to... Um, you know, go back to the last page I was in and read on paper. But the thing is, we literally have these inventions that we have right now that have the Bible in audio form, in written form. So for me, I've got a podcast. It's a Bible in a Year podcast. And I will throw on, it'll give me a couple of chapters of this, a couple of chapters of that, has a little discussion at the very end of it. It's 25 minutes. And so I try to plug that into my day and make sure that is a, that is a North Star for my life. Because at the end of the day, I'm, it's, it's me trying to put together an Ikea table without the instructions. <laughs> It's not going to be what it's supposed to be. But if I can really stay glued to what this thing is, is, is telling me, what, what the Word is, is trying to walk me through, then we take those things and then we just try to remember. We try to recall. We try to build things on there. How can I, how can I use these verses? If God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, I, I, I'm a dad. So all of a sudden I, think, I hear son and I go to my children. So I start relating how Scripture adapts to how I can feel as a father. And also I've got a dad, so I know how it feels to be a son. So I'm, I'm, all of a sudden the Scripture is now getting bones and, and skin and texture and it has I, I, there's certain things that are coming alive to me that I'm learning and stuff so there's also parts of Leviticus where I go like well I've never slaughtered a ram before but if I did now I guess I know how to do it and clean up when I get through but there's but the thing is there's there's also something about that where I look at that and go they had to be so intentional to follow God in the Old Testament like it wasn't this Holy Spirit led Jesus came to forgive he showed you everything how it's supposed to go it's them going like, okay, I guess we're going to just burn these crops now and, and, and really believe that this is going to be enough. And so you look at that and go, man, that's dedication and faithfulness. So why in the world can I not pull the Bible app up and, and knock out a few scriptures to be able to like get my heart in the right place so I can try to live out those scriptures to the people around me every day? What does rest look like for you? I am awful at rest. I am not a natural rester. Um, I mean, like, just, just in the last, I will be home in my own bed twice in the next two weeks, okay? So, unless I'm just really good at taking naps, I don't really know how, like, physically I'm just able to rest when I'm going from an airport to another show to lead something and to work on something and to, do, like, all the things that I'm, I'm supposed to be doing. I yeah, mean, that is that's a me, Is that's, on the inside or outside? That's inside. Okay. That's inside. I have an eye now. <laughs> okay. I was just making sure. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to get the hat with it. Wait, mm -hmm. oh, Omar, no. Got him. Did you get it with your hat? Yeah, I got it. Uh, we got that on camera. Okay. Please tell me. Yeah. Make sure he's dead because it's not good behind Like a Tyler wasp water. <laughs>
I think he busted into pieces. Oh, he's right here. Is he oh, alive? Use your, use your I'm you waiting want... for him to get on flat ground. There you go. There you go. You got him. Boom. Tag, tag, is, tag team effort. This is team work. I'm gonna pick that up at rest. Okay. okay. <laughs> We're gonna pick that up. <laughs> <laughs> Putting all of that together, That's, we are posting that. Please do. Show people how brave I was. <laughs> <laughs> at the beginning of 2020, um, for years, I heard people that would have like a word for their year. They were gonna have a word for the year. And, and what I, the way I learned about it was there was a ton of people in 2018 that would message me and say, this year my word is different. And I would go, well, that's kind of cool. And they were like, tell me about it. I was like, that's very, I, I thought I was very honored they would do that. But I was like, I I'm not gonna come up with like a word. That's a weird thing for me to do. I don't, I don't really get that and understand that necessarily. But for some reason, the beginning of 2020, the Lord just walloped my heart with the word rest over and over again. And I'm going like, okay, well, we're about to finish building a house. Um, I'm about to go do two tours this spring. I've got to finish a record. We're going to release that record. I'm going to be, I've got so many things about to happen. So maybe you're going to teach me how to take a nap. Maybe you're going to teach me how to like, I don't know what rest is supposed to mean, but you know what, if you keep telling me that, I guess you're going to teach me something. And then, I don't know if you know this or not, at the, about three months into 2020, uh, a global pandemic <laughs> that shut everything down. Now, I'm not about to admit for a second, this is not my fault. I didn't do this, okay? <laughs> but all of a sudden, my whole world stopped and I went home and I was just there. And I'm sitting there in this moment going like, okay. And I found myself, even when I was at home, not being able to rest, whether I was trying to earn and work for the affection of my wife and three kids and just be like, I gotta make up for lost time. I gotta really just try to show them. So I'm trying to come up with games and do things or I'm trying to go like, okay, I can still work on stuff on the record here at my house, I can do things. But it all goes back to a song I wrote about 12 years ago, you've never heard it before. No one's ever heard it before because there was a song that I wrote that was just this honest prayer that I only play at live shows every once in a while when I really feel like somebody needs to hear it. And it came from my, I remember one time I saw the scripture, be still and know that I'm God in the Psalms. And I just said, um, I know you're God. You will have to teach me to be still because when I get still, I feel like I'm not enough. I feel like I'm not doing enough. I'm not earning my keep around here. And I remember the Lord just throwing a chorus on my chest. And I've never, I've tried writing around this, Aaron, 20 times. And I've never been to write a song, but the chorus just says this. Teach me to be still and teach me to lay down. I give up all my strength. I lay my armor on the ground. Show me how to rest on the altar of your will. I know that you are God. But teach me to be still, teach me to be still. And I have sung that so many mornings, so many restless afternoons, so many late nights where I'm just going like, God, I cannot be worth any more to you. Because the thing is, in the same book that says, go and make disciples, it says, be still and know that I am God. So if, if I'm going to believe that, that going and making disciples is important, I have to believe that rest is important too. And it's in those moments where I go like, God, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to believe that just the breath in my lungs is enough right now for you to love me. Not because I earned it or deserve it, because heads up, the best I could do when I'm working my hardest doesn't earn or deserve the grace and mercy and love of God. So why would I not just sit back and go, okay, I am forgiven and I am enough and in my stillness, I trust that you still love me. And when I started learning that and believing that, everything changed. So it's the moment of taking rest and being still that helped you see the rest that is actually found in Jesus and the eternal rest that we have with yeah. him. You said um, that little piece that you just sang, I identified with this line about putting my armor down. Yeah. And rest allows us to do that. All the things that we've put on as protection mechanisms yeah. around other people suddenly in front of Jesus is a way to keep him out instead of letting him in. Yeah. What, what was some of the armor that you felt like was keeping him, keeping him out? Oh, I mean, I, I think a lot of it had to do with um, me just trying to be all things to all people. Like, I'm trying to be Jesus. Okay. I'm trying to be Jesus to everybody else. And the thing is, I'm not saying that we should not try our hardest to live a life that looks like Jesus. Because if we can, if we can, if Jesus can make us look like him and if we can model our lives after him, that's not a bad thing at all. But it's when I make it the ultimate thing that if I don't keep 
my standard up to everybody else. And I start worrying about what everyone else thinks. Um, I'm in a very weird profession because like my dad has made paper for 41 years. He's at a, a paper mill in Evadale, Texas. But there's not a chart that comes out every week and tells him how much everyone liked his paper that week. But I do. I have a, I have a music chart that comes out every week, lets me know how, what women from the age of 25 to 39 thought about my song when they listened to it for 10 seconds. It's a weird thing to know. But the thing is, if I find my worth in what this person said with 10 seconds of music, I've got a God who's already told me my worth with the 39 years that I've put in and with whatever many years he keeps me here on this earth until eternity. So, so why in the world would I look at how, how even, even people that I love and I really want to show them how much I value them and I want them to see value in me, if I get so caught up in that part of the relationship, I lose the most important relationship and the gift of grace that's involved with that relationship. So if I can rest, I've also found that the more I rest in that and the more that I let my heart, and I'm not just gonna just lay around the whole time and just be like, God loves me, I don't need to help you pack your lunches today. <laughs> that's, a, that's a bad dad, right? But I found that the more that I can keep my heart reserved and keep my heart rested and I can rest in the idea of, of His mercy and His grace being enough for me, I am so much better for all the people around me. My wife of 18 and a half years, I'm so much of a better husband whenever I rest in the idea that Jesus loves me. I'm so much of a better father to my three kids when I rest in the idea that His mercy and grace is sufficient for me. And I, that I'm a better dad that way because I can show the same mercy and grace to them on the other side. So it's, it's that give and take. It's a, it's a weird, it's just, it's how heaven works. It's just this weird, crazy thing where like His strength is made perfect in our weakness. And sometimes we have to choose to be weak because the most vulnerable thing we can do is just lay there. But you know what? If He can be, if he, if, in Deuteronomy it says, He will fight your battles. All you need to do is stand back and watch. So it's like, why would we not take rest as the opportunity to say like, all right, I will take this because you're important enough for me to give you my rest, believe that you love me still, and then I'll just, I'll just wait to the other side of it, and then, and then I'll, work, I'll go make disciples, and I'll work hard when you tell me to work hard. But right now, I'm going to trust that you're telling me to rest too. And you know that you have this ultimate love, and He intends good for us yeah. in everything that we do. And so why wouldn't He give us all the good if He's given us all the other things? That's Absolutely. what Romans says. Yeah. In this world, there will be troubles. So it's not like th there's not going to be things. Come it, following Jesus doesn't make everything easy. It just gives us, it just gives us, uh, the, his, his yoke is easy. So we still work. We still do things. But he, he is, the whole phrase, it's not, it's not scriptural to say there, that God will not give you more than you can handle. God will not give you more than he can handle. And he will. He will handle this. Sometimes he doesn't need this at all. And sometimes he goes, okay, you're going to take this step here. And we're going to walk through this thing and work through this thing together. And then you'll get to see my, my grace as you stumble through this whole thing. Or you lay back and I'll do the whole thing and then you get to see my strength. Some days we know him as comforter and some days we know him as peacemaker. Sometimes we know him as provider and sometimes we know him as protector. So we have to allow him in our lives to have space to be all those things because I love getting to know Jesus in more ways than just the little places that I try to.